items from the incorrectly drilled chassis to this new chassis at this point. But a week or two ago when I was taking these transformers off of this chassis, the two output transformers, the power and the choke, I noticed on one of these, and let me zoom down in here so you can see it a little bit. I noticed on one of these that the paint was coming off of the end bells where the bolts were at on it. And uh, I didn't do it on any of the others, and so I was scratching my head a little bit. I emailed Edcor, and they said, "Yeah, we basically have had some with um, likely some, uh, you know, some bad powder coating there on the end bell." So they were nice and kind, and they shipped me an, a new set of end bells at no cost to uh, to put onto this uh, to this amplifier. So we're going to get this done, get this chassis drilled out. I'm not going to drag you through that because I've already drug you through it once. I'll just show you the end result here. All right, there she is about two and a half hours later. Um, so even without making a video, plan on a couple hours to do this. Uh, I've got it right. Got the, uh, the jacks here directly underneath the uh, output transformers. Got the uh, RCA input jacks here in the very middle. Got our power over here on one side underneath this. And I thought we would weigh this thing just for, uh, for fun and giggles here. All right, we've got it up on our handy-dandy postal scales. Take your best guess. Uh, let's see. How about 35 pounds? Um, that is a monster. It uh, doesn't seem like it, but uh, it's a bunch of iron. Okay, hopefully you've followed along far enough and you've been able to get your uh, chassis drilled and uh, components mounted to it. If not, find a friend that you can go over to their house that has some, uh, you know, good drill and some bits and various components that you could, you could drill this thing out with. And, um, you know, so let's say you've made it that far and then you're, you've got it on the bench and you're ready to start building this amp, um, you know, the soldering of all the components and whatnot. I have now made a list that I think at a very minimum you need to have to actually conduct this build successfully. So let's walk you through all the items that I think you need to have. All right, sorry about my raspy voice. I've had a cold, sore throat, chest thing going on now for two weeks and I'm struggling with it. I live in the basement too much. Um, so first off, you need a decent digital multimeter. And when I say decent digital multimeter, you don't need to go spend two and $300 on a high-end flute meter. This is a little EX Tech EX330. This and the leads in a kit, they sell on um, Amazon for about 50 bucks. Um, you can get it without the leads for less than 40. Uh, make you a great little meter if you don't have one. I do recommend having a set of leads that on one end, you know, plug into the meter here, but on the other end, um, or a little clip-on style like this right here. And these are made by a company called Easy Hook. Um, I actually bought these at Fry's Electronics uh, last time I ran into one, and I like these a lot. You're, you're at about eight bucks for a set of, uh, set of good leads like that. Um, up next, wire snippers. Okay, I use three different types of wire snippers on my bench. This is a set of Lindstrom. Um, they're made in Sweden. They're 0 .0, 0 0.1 to 0.8 millimeter copper wire snips really small tight easy to get into little places easy to hold with just two fingers like this about 20 bucks for a set of these these are the uh kind of old industry standard i mean these things you get used by the gazillions and electronic um component build shops and then uh you see where they grind the heads on them and then uh and uh keep sharpening them these are this is exolite 175m about 18 bucks for a set of these shipped Really good wire snips, highly recommend. And then this is a set of Tronex, a little bit higher end. Those are about $75, um, but you don't, you certainly don't need that. I would highly recommend here a good set of needle nose pliers that get fairly sharp down here at the end. This is a set of 30 year old Snap-on brand uh, from Snap-on Tool Company, but you certainly don't need that. Um, you could just find any decent brand needle nose pliers. I use these for everything from bending component leads uh, to holding, holding wires in place. Next to my soldering iron, that set of needle nose pliers gets the number two use of anything on my bench, period. Um, then let's talk about hookup wire. All right, so I use um, almost exclusively um, silver coated PTFE wire, otherwise known as um, silver coated. Um, copper on the inside and then um, Teflon on the outside. 
and I buy these little rolls from a guy named uh, Nav Ships on eBay, and it's not cheap, uh, but man, it does an amazing job. The problem with Teflon coated wire, um, while it is wonderful, while it's thinner, the insulation is thinner and all that, you have to use a thermal wire stripper. You cannot use a regular wire stripper. It will not work well at all. The problem with these, a decent thermal wire stripper that's in any kind of good shape is a, a, anywhere from $150 to $200. A brand new one of these is about $230, $240. So even if you're buying a used one, expect to pay a good bit. If you find a used one of these for $75, I bet you $100 something's wrong with it. When I went to buy this one, I went to, through two or three before I ever found a decent one. And finally, I just broke down and uh, bought a new one. But there, there's hope. You don't have to go the Teflon coated route. This is a nice little box here from a company called Remington Industries. And it is, um, if you'll notice, it's 25 feet of each color of um, 600 volt hookup wire. And... Um, kind of open the box up if you'll notice in here you've got just about every color you need yellow white red blue black um so you're in a good uh, you're in a good place um here and this little box off of amazon this by the way was part number ul 15 10 15 ul 10 15 um i want to say this was 25 30 bucks something like this but one of these would you could pretty much do the whole lamp I will put a link down below to the video. I made an entire video just on this topic of what hookup wire to use. I'll link it below. There again, if you're going to get into building lots of amps, the Teflon route's the way to go. Otherwise, I would highly recommend sticking with the uh, re regular poly um, PVC coated wire. Anyway, if you go the PVC coated wire, two different wire stripper types I would recommend. This is a Greenlee brand. I picked them up at Lowe's. I noticed Lowe's, no longer, Lowe's Hardware no longer carries Greenlee brand. Uh, they now carry some other brand that is brand, has a brown wrapper here on the top instead of um, green, but it's the exact same stripper. Um, so you can pick one of these, set of these up, 20, 25 bucks at your local Lowe's Hardware. I also use these type a lot. Um, they're the kind you have to kind of self adjust on the strip. Um, but these are like five or six bucks. I used to get them at Radio Shack. I don't know. I'm assuming you can just buy those online these days. You will need a soldering iron, okay? I have had four or five hundred dollar soldering stations before, and I keep coming back to this little Heiko FX888D soldering. You've probably seen it in many of my videos. It is a $75 soldering iron. Um, sometimes you can find, they're almost always $75. It depends on how much shipping is. Sometimes you can find them with five or $6 shipping. Sometimes they have 10 or $12 shipping. Um, eBay, Amazon, both have that HACO and it will, it will serve you well as a great soldering iron for this and many, many, many other projects. Solder wise, I use, and, and if you're going to build one of these amps, I would recommend ordering a spool of this. You don't have to get the great big spool that I've got here. You can get the half spool. Um, this is from MG Chemicals. Okay, it is 63% um, tin, 37% lead, so 63-37 or 60-40 if you wanted. But um, this is a rosin core solder. Size-wise, it is 0 0.050 inches, otherwise known as 18-gauge solder. I find this is perfect um, for building a point-to-point -point amplifier like we're going to. It's not too small but yet it's not too big. Um, so I use an awful lot of this. Um, highly recommend it, but you can use whatever solder you would like. Um, you're gonna wanna get some various size terminal strips. And when I'm talking about little phenolic, um, little strips like this, and I keep them in all different. So this has like three on it. Um, I have them that have, you know, eight connections on them. Um, lots of different sizes. There's some with two on them. Um, but you're going to want a couple different sizes of these because you're going to need them for standoffs for mounting components and whatnot in your amps. Um, <clears throat> Antique Electronics Supply, otherwise known as, tu as Tubes and More, great place to get these. You can just pick up a couple different packs of different sizes. All right, you're going to want heat shrink tubing. And I, I keep a large bin here of all different sorts and sizes. But you can also buy a little pack like this for like $10. And I, I just ordered this. Um, off of uh, eBay and it's a little kit that has red and black in different sizes and it was like $8 shipped. Uh, but you're gonna want some of that, maybe some black, uh, maybe some red as well. Definitely to be able to uh, neat and tidy things up along the way. 
right, I do believe you're going to want an oscilloscope, to be honest with you. When you get done with this amplifier, you're going to want to be able to trace the signal throughout it and make sure you got a nice clean sine wave. So you need both an oscilloscope and some type of function or signal generator. On the oscilloscope, it just needs to be 5 megahertz or higher, which is kind of the bottom, bottom end of any scope that's ever been made. It doesn't take a lot to do audio work. Um, and I've got a video I made just on how to pick out an oscilloscope. I will post a link to that down below. Um, as well as just, you know, find a function generator. You really need this thing to be able to do something around 1 kilohertz up to about 20 kilohertz. Because uh, you're going to be able to feed this with a nice pure sine wave and, and kind of look at the sine wave throughout this thing. Sure, I use a lot more gear on my bench back here when testing out a circuit to figure out um, total harmonic distortion, harmonics, things of that nature. But I'm just telling you what I think is a minimum you would need here um, as part of this. You're going to want a set of test speakers. I use a lot of 8 ohm, 250 watt, 1% Dell dummy loads. Um, but you could you could simply use a set of speakers for what you're testing. Just to, I'm just telling you if they're if they're going to be your bench speakers, get something you don't care a lot about. M make it a set of speakers you picked up at Goodwill. You can test. Just make sure you're not going to burn up your speakers in some way. And then if they if you don't have any issues, then move the amp over and listen to it on a nice set of speakers. So just a pair of junk speakers is kind of what I'm talking about. Up next, you are going to want to print out the schematics. So if you will go to blueglow.net, my website, click on sketches and info here, and then start scrolling down um, a couple items down into it, you will find the single-ended KT88 amplifier pre-build draft version. So you're at risk right now. You know, one, one thing I might would recommend is let me build this thing from beginning to end. Let me tweak anything that needs to be tweaked. Um, then I'll put up a final set, and you can kind of... Uh, Kind of start your build then but hey if you're risky like like i would be you want to build this along in parallel pull down the uh, draft versions there's both the schematics for the power supply and the amplifier as well as if you click here on this you'll get the entire uh bomb build of materials if you remember it's about uh, was it 700 and some dollars 787 dollars to um for the components to build this thing with um so you're about about 800 bucks into what i think is going to be an amazing amp by the way um, but go ahead and download those, and we can uh, and, and print them out. That would be my recommendation. You're going to want a printed copy of these because you're going to want to take notes on them as you go along. You're going to want to measure voltages and mark voltages where they should be. Um, and as I build this amp, I will continue to build out where where various voltages should be at various points, and I'll continue to update these schematics out here. All right, and the last thing on this list, you're going to need the parts on that build of materials. And, um, you know, if you decide to deviate away from any of those parts a little bit, want to do something slightly different, feel free to shoot me an email to mw at blueglow.net and say, hey, I'm thinking about using this component instead of that one. I'll give you my thought process on that. But now the topic of the day, what I've been waiting to get to. So here's the million dollar question I've got. Um, if any of you guys watched, I previously made an entire series on a build of a single ended um, 807 amplifier and it was 16 videos long in length. And I got some feedback along the way. Wow, couldn't this have been more like four or five videos or maybe two or three videos? 16 videos was a lot to watch. So I had planned to kind of make this series more like four or five videos long. And now I'm getting feedback from people that are sending me notes and, uh, and comments basically saying, hey, I want you to go deep on this one. I want to understand what every component does, why the value is what it is, blah, 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 right? So I'm trying to decide from this point forward, how deep do I go on this thing? Um, do I go deep like I did on the 807 amplifier? Probably be another, on top of this, this is video four, probably be another 10 plus videos. So that might end up being 12, uh, 15 videos long. Something in between, maybe another five or seven videos, or keep it at a high level, just snap another two or three, four videos and uh, show, me the, show me how to physically build it and don't go so deep into what all the components are and why they are what they are. So I need your feedback in the comments below. You can give me a uh, one, go deep, two, in between, three, keep it high level. And I'm going to let you guys voting determine how deep and uh, into the content I go on this amplifier. I do have it on my bench at this point. I will show you here in just a second. And I am getting ready to start the soldering myself. So I thought before I do that, I kind of need to get this uh, 
this video out there and get your input and um, probably take me another week or two here on this thing to get it to a point I'm ready to show the next video but um, I'm excited about it I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with this until it's done my goal is I will have some time off over Thanksgiving. So between now and Thanksgiving and whatever time I'm going to be off over Thanksgiving, we're going to wrap this amplifier up over that next month, basically. So um, you won't have to wait till Christmas. We're going to start on another project before Christmas, hopefully. So give me the feedback below. Let me know what you think. All right. As you can see, we've got this on our bench now. And the first one of the first things I like to do is to wire up the power supply. Um, and the outputs because then you get rid of all these wires because pretty much every bit of this over here I'm sorry all this over here is for the power supply and then if we wire up these two here on the outputs to the speaker jacks um, we will have all that and then we'll just have a few wires left here to deal with in the future so it gets more and more out of the way um, so I do like to get the power supply wired up we do have to start thinking about component layout um, there's some pretty decent sized components we're going to be putting underneath this thing. This is the 100, 100 microfarad F and T cap, and these are the 100 microfarad at 630 volt soling caps. So we're going to have to think about where we might would mount these and uh, how we would mount them in our power supply. And we're going to want to put hole, drill holes for our terminal strips. So that's what our whole next video, video five, is going to be about: is uh, planning the component layout and starting to wire this amplifier out. As you've noticed, what have I done? Yes, I have printed out my schematics. You're going to want to do that. Um, have you a nice set of schematics printed out and ready to go? All right, I'm going to pause here at this point, and I'm going to wait on your feedback on how deep we go into this video series um, at this point. Do I, do I take it a couple deep, or do I, or do I go uh, way, way deep on this thing? All right, vote down below. What do you, what do you want? One, two, or three? Let me know. Thanks, everyone.